and I'll put you on mute. If you can use the chat at the bottom of your screen, you should have a chat area. If you want to do that, please um, just send me mess, uh, questions during the session and I'll be able to facilitate them throughout. We're going to start today with the presentation from Stephen Greenall, who's our CEO, and then that will lead into uh, Jenny Dees and Keith Dye and uh, we also have another participant from our company actually on, which is Julie Fuse from um, uh, Australia. All right, so I think you should all be on. You're muted yourself, Branislav. All right, Stephen, would you like to start? Yeah. Sure, absolutely. Sorry about that. All over the country. That's fine. Go back up again. Well, good afternoon, good <laughs> evening, good morning to everyone. Great to have an international audience. Um, it's actually from Australia. So the slide that Branislav's got in front here is our opening slide and this really encompasses everything that our business is about. Uh, I'm a trombone player from the age of nine. Uh, Julie, who's there as well, is a, is a brass player and uh, we've been sort of interested in music from a young age. Um, and when we had the opportunity to ex expand that interest to our own children and other people's children, we were delighted to be able to do that. So we're very focused on one thing, which is our business, whether we're using these products or the little trombones, we really just want to get children started and Hannah, how to building the future musicians, um, you know, get their, their, their legacy started with our products. That's what we're really keen to do. So we're a starting place for children to get involved into brass playing, and then hopefully they go on to become brass players themselves. So I'll talk to you a little bit about um, the P-Buzz in a minute. And then uh, we've got some um, colleagues from the States. Uh, I saw G uh, Jenny and uh, Keith, um, who will be able to talk to you about some applications uh, in the classroom. Um, and then we have, I think Melissa is here as well from West. Uh, so uh, who will be able to, for those of us, uh, those of you in Texas particularly, uh, and the uh, music grant will be able to touch on that as well. So that's the topic for the conversation. It's probably about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. So where, where did it all start? Um, um, and it's kind of a, a crazy story, really. Um, so back in, well, you can see there, 2002, but really around 2002 to 2007, um, the government in the UK, the Queen of England, we like to say, she's head of our government, um, decided or oh, no. decreed that the trombone was actually a endangered species. It was on the verge of extinction. Uh, the trombone, the baritone, the euphonium, the oboe, bassoon, tuba. Um, and as a trombone player myself, um, that wasn't something I wasn't very happy about. Um, so our concern uh, was that a generation of musicians were being lost. And um, through my trombone teacher, I met another individual, a guy called Hugh Rashley, he was a product design uh, engineer, just graduated from university. And he and I were talking about how could we do something different? How could we engage children and get them really interested in brass playing and particularly in the trombone to start with? And we turned to plastic. Um, it's durable, it's tough, it's all over our lives um, and we can make it colorful and fun. And that really was the inspiration of uh, making something that was affordable, accessible, and gave children the opportunity to get involved in music.
And so that journey started in 2007. We formed the company and after three years, we came up with our first product, the P-Bone, which is now the world's best-selling trombone. Uh, in the UK, around 80% of children who learn either trumpet or trombone starting out will be playing on a P-Bone or a P-Trumpet. Um, and that's predominantly because the instruments are very lightweight, which means the children are developing good posture, good airflow, good embouchure straight away, all the technical skill that we want them to learn. Um, the instruments are very affordable and they're very robust. I mean, that bottom left-hand picture there, there's a load of trombones in the classroom right there which is not a sight you'd want to see with brass instruments particularly. Um, damaged slides and a $90 for a slide repair. And you can see there on the right hand side, children also holding up the trumpets. And we also want people to have fun because music making is fun. That's why we love music as well. I'm not advocating necessarily you need to go swimming with your musical instruments or you need to go paragliding, but you can certainly have some fun with them. And even there in the middle, the Philadelphia Orchestra uh, on 4th of July concert playing red, white and blue pea bones. That's a great sight to see. So when we started, we started with a pea bone, which was the trombone. That was the first instrument we did. And then we did a, a slightly smaller version, which is this one here. So I'll, I'll show you a bit later. Uh, the pea bone mini, which is an E flat. Um, and then we did the trumpet. And then we wanted to go even bigger. How do we get children sort of K through six level? In the UK, we would call that early years foundation stage. So children as young as say four or five through to the age of 11, 10 or 11. Because what we were discovering was that um, people were starting trombone, typically probably around about the age of nine or 10 or trumpet about nine or 10 but that's, a, that's relatively late for them to be understanding the concept of buzzing as making a sound. Um, they're playing recorders at a much earlier age, they're singing obviously, they're doing ukuleles, they're doing boom whackers or other percussion or off instruments. But what they aren't doing is learning buzzing as a way to make an authentic sound. And that really got us focused on this product, the P-Buzz. Um, and that notion of focusing on buzzing, making a really simple sound, learning very simple notes, so just six notes on the instrument, um, and designing something that would be perfect for young children and little hands. So really, you know, giving as many people as possible that first entry and gateway into the world of brass playing. So what do we have? What, what actually is the P Buzz? Well, it's a very accessible instrument. So very simple, operates on a sliding mechanism. So as it gets longer, the pitch gets lower. So it's really great for showing the relationship of pitch and length. So sometimes you know, when children are doing the recorder and they're going BAG and they're trying to understand why is the pitch getting lower? Well, on the PBAs, it's really, really simple. I've got B, A and G here. And the pitch is just getting lower as I move the slide out. It's ABS plastic, very tough. That's my dining room table I'm damaging now. Very simple. It's got, and you can see the pictures close ups here, but you might not see there's a little R there for the right hand, and there's a little L for the left hand here. The children generally hold it correctly straight away. It's the adults we always have to help them with. So, um, and why do we hold it that way? Well, that's just very similar to the trombone. So in the trombone, the slide hand would be the right hand and the holding hand would be the left hand. The same on the trumpet, the activity of changing the note is done in the right hand with the pistons, okay? It doesn't need any maintenance whatsoever. It's really easy to clean. It has very, very simple, you can see the letters here, as I put it out, all the way through to F. We've also got the numbers. And the numbers are really just another way of allowing teachers to teach the notation if they want to. It's kind of like an homage to the trombone slide. Or if you just want to do it by colours. So if you're using off instruments or boom whackers in your classrooms already, you play a red note, you know red's a C. Um, so it all fits together beautifully with that. 
one of the things we're really proud of is our quality levels. Um, so we make all of our products at automotive factories because automotive factories is where they make great things in plastic. Um, so we've got outstanding quality levels. And this product here is completely made in England. In fact, about 40 miles from where I'm sitting right now, which we're also very proud of because we're a British company. And the one last thing I will say is the mouthpiece. So for us, authenticity is really, really important. I know a lot of you will be using recorders in your general music classrooms. Uh, recorders are a fantastic instrument. I'm sure the recorder world isn't worried about the peepers arriving. But for us, authenticity is the relationship then of how do we move children from a P-bus onto a trombone or a brass instrument. And that's why the mouthpiece in particular is really, really important because the buzzing, the technique or the embouchure, using of the air, the posture that I use to create a good sound, buzzing into a mouthpiece, using that on a P-bus, so I can take the same mouthpiece, put that into my trombone. And I get the same note as well. So there's a direct correlation between the people. It's a gateway instrument. So just to sum up then, five inch bell, very lightweight. It's got an F to a C in concert pitch. So same sort of range as a recorder. It's a single harmonic which means the children will only be able to play one harmonic. There won't be any overtones or difficulties when pitching the notes. They'll get it really easily. All the notes are there. Um, it's got the beginner mouthpiece, which is there. It's about the size, slightly smaller than the trombone mouthpiece, slightly bigger than the trumpet mouthpiece. It's um, worth just having a look at a video of some children who um, certainly my three children upstairs are all tucked in bed, although they'd be able to demonstrate, but let's hear some kids playing. The Peebles program that we started in primary schools was aimed at year two, earlier than we would normally start with brass players, but the Peebles is designed especially for that age group, and maybe even year one as well. So we took some year two pupils and gave them Peebles and gave them four sessions and a performance. It's just been an absolutely brilliant experience, having music like this, an opportunity like this has been fabulous. It's been really lovely for me as their teacher to see them um, in a different way. In the past we've started from Key Stage 2, but to have an instrument suitable for Key Stage 1 really is beneficial. The sound seemed to be easy for them to make and the sliding scale rather than getting complicated with the keys, they had an instant change that they could hear. I think the thing that they enjoy the most about it is it because it's so child friendly because they're able to pick it up and within a short time be able to play a tune. And I think it's lovely for them to play it as well to adults, to, you know, to visitors and to the parents. The parents were just amazed. The children rose the occasion magnificently. The way that the children behaved, their demeanour, the way they deported themselves in public, everybody in the audience was completely amazed, really. I think the, the free buzz is a fun instrument for the children because it's attractive, it's bright, it's robust and it's a tool that they can walk around with, it's not heavy, it's, they're getting results fast. The buzz is like a trumpet. I like the sounds they make. We've been doing lots of marching and playing a new tune. The best thing about them is I can change the sounds by using it long or short. The whole experience of having the people in school has been really fun. The children have grown in self-confidence. They've been able to perform to their peers, to their parents and to an outside audience as well. I think it's just been an amazing experience. I think it's a great way to introduce children to brass instruments and just finding a real joy of music. I think it's been it's fun, it's accessible to all, it's been very easy. As a teacher, I could actually work with the children now and develop what they've done with the keyboards, which I couldn't do with any other instrument. Um, and I, I would say definitely give it a go. I was delighted with the way the project went. Everything went really well and I was really pleased with the outcome. Thank you.
Okay, maybe we can pick it up here again about the education resources. Yeah, so um, we've, a, a lot of us in the business have either been in, t in teaching for a long time, uh, whether it's music leaders or classroom teachers. Um, and what we realize is that um, teachers like to um, share resources with each other, um, learn from what they're doing and what, what works really well. So. We're really fortunate that we've, um, with that spirit, we've got lots of resources available on our dedicated education site, uh, which you can find through any of our main pages. Um, and on there, you'll find lots of people's uh, different uh, styles of lesson plans, uh, backing tracks, a huge array of resources, really, um, which, you, which you'll be able to use in your own classrooms and support the uh, introduction of the instruments. And we're also, um, we're very lucky that we've got uh, Jenny, who will be talking a bit later as well about some of the amazing things that she's been using um, with these instruments in the in in her classrooms as well. So those are the four sites: P Bone, P Trumpet, P Buzz, and our education site as well. And I've just shared there some YouTube videos of. Um, various different groups, different age ages. So the, the video that we just watched, those children were about seven, six and seven years old. Um, but we've got lots of videos of singing people. So children who are using in groups of singing, peebles, ukuleles and percussion all together. So, I mean, it's obviously, um, you might not use a peebles exclusively for 12 months, uh, probably unlikely, but you're certainly gonna want to introduce buzzing as a concept, I'm sure, alongside singing, alongside ukuleles, alongside percussion. And then you can bring all those groups of, um, of music making together uh, for the children. Um, and you've got music games and marching and all sorts of various other things you can do as well. So next I should unmute, if you bear with me for a second. Jenny, you should be on unmute now. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Do you wanna do, do you wanna go to Keith first and then back to me? Uh, sure, you're not the getter? What? No, we're in different places. Yeah, um, no, I'm at home. He's up at school. <laughs> oh, is he still working? Well, Keith, I apologize. I thought you were right next to Jenny. So no, that's you, okay. Do a yeah. quick intro, Keith. Okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, I don't, I'm not going to contribute a lot to this today and that because my interest in this and what I've been doing um, some different sessions around the country on are using this instrument as a beginning band instrument uh, exclusively. Um, we've used it here for now four semesters, I believe, um, with our brass class at Texas Tech University, and um, especially for non-brass players, it is just an extraordinary introduction to being able to get the fundamentals of brass playing instruction really cemented before you confront the weight and the complexity of the actual instrument and whatever. And so our music majors that don't play brass instruments really love it, and of course everybody just thinks it's really fun and cool and, you know, all that kind of stuff too and that. So um, it's, uh, uh, you know, I think it's a really neat option and it's something that if an elementary school has it that could be shared, say, with a middle school or a beginning band program and you get a lot of use out of them with a lot of different factions throughout the course of the year and so forth and that. But Jenny's got some really exciting ideas um, that she's been working with with uh, elementary music settings. Thank you, Dr. Chief. Thank you, Keith. You're welcome. <laughs> so you guys, my name is Jenny Dees. I teach with um, Keith at Texas Tech. And I'm an early, I'm a flute player originally. I'm not a proponent of brass playing, but if it happens to people, that's fine. Um, and my interest in this as an early childhood educator is the accessibility of the instrument um, I took these instruments to our um, uh, CDRC, which is the Child Development Research Center on campus. Um, they immediately took to it. They immediately, then these are four and five-year-olds. Okay, so four and five-year-olds. The four and five-year-olds can make a sound, as, as Stephen was saying, 
they make sounds better than we do as adults more immediately than we do as adults because we tend to overthink everything in our lives. Um, one of my other main interests on this in the in the elementary schools is to um, to use the instrument not only as as an introduction to brass instruments, but also for its accessibility to things like um, composition and music reading and all of these uh, all of these different things that we want to do with the kids. But on recorder, it's really hard, right? Because with recorder, as you guys know that, and I love playing recorder. Like I'm a flute player, but what you know is that the, the fine motor skills that even in fourth and fifth grade with a lot of our kids, they don't have the fine motor skills. Whereas with the P buzz, it is all gross motor skills, which is absolutely fantastic. And um, that's one of the great things about it. One of the other things that I love about it is the color coding. Okay, so as Stephen was saying, it matches boom whackers, it matches bells, it matches all of these different instruments, which um, there's a raft of research that talks about how important color coding can be for kids with neurodiversities and exceptionalities. Um, besides it just being fun, right? It's sort of a universal design for learning. It's setting up everyone for success. Let me show you a few ideas that I've used with my classes. Um, I like doing um, finding found objects and I'm the queen of finding found objects. So these are just regular paper clips that are colored and they have that little plastic coloring on them. So you give the kids some paper clips that match the color on the PBAs, they write their own composition. I call it a color composition. And if you'll notice, this one is the silver one. This one is just a, a metal. So what can they do on the metal one? They can choose any note they want. Okay. And this shows them the long air sound that you want them to play because you don't want the air, you don't want it to be a back, back, back. You want that air, continuous air to go, okay? But then what you can also do, you can tell the kids if you turn it this way, then this is a short note. This no, this one would be a shorter note. So it would be long, short, short, long. And again, they get to choose on this last note if you want them to do it. It doesn't have to be in a 4-4 setting. It can be in anything. Now, with um, STEM education or STEAM education, which is one of my main focuses is to add its science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, right? Well, this looks a lot like what instrument? Oh, the trombone. So you could unfold one of these, have the kids do it, talk about the length of the, of the tube of all the different brass instruments and how when you fold those up, why did we fold them up? Why, how did they used to look? How do they look now? And so you can talk about, and with, with real life hands-on, show them what that length does to the sound, just like the, the long and short, or the using the pebas. I'm sorry, those are my dogs barking. You can also use just found objects. I had um, with, with some of my kids, I said, we were looking at all the colors. I said, find something at home and bring it from home. And so they would bring something from home and then they would compose their own pieces using found objects from the house. And they would, they would really take ownership of that, which was awesome. These are just little um, foam pieces. You can use these little colored fuzzies as well in the same, in the same vein of color composition, okay? Something um, that one of my kids brought was, of course, um, a matchbox car, right? Okay, cool. So then there are all these different colors, but what I figured out, what I thought of just in the moment as an improvisational teaching thing, is they'll roll the car and you play for as long as the car is rolling. So you're using your air for that long, right? And then they would, it could be in um, groups of four, and they would, um, they would roll the car to each other, and they would use the air in that way. Something else that is a ton of fun is to do balloon conducting. So the kids have, um, 
or in the, the teacher would lead it, right? Because if you show it this way, they follow, they follow the air, right? And what's really important about using a balloon as opposed to using something else is that the kids are thinking air when they see a balloon. That's, it's just, it's something that, that works in their brain in a really magical way. I don't always understand how kids' brains work, but I'm not smart enough. Okay, so they take the balloon and they can go like this and they have long air sounds, right? Well, if you wanted to have part work, then there's this color and there's this color and half of the room follows this and half of the room follows this. Well, is it just for long sounds? No, because if they, you were going like this, conducting like this, the kids would be producing the sound of bup, 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 bup. They can also conduct in just whatever they want. They can do this, they can do this, they can make it all happen at the same time. And we actually did this um, in one of my classes just yesterday. I got video of it, I need to send that to you guys. You can do the same thing with ribbon wands, right? But what I like, because the ribbon wands are really magical and it's all Harry Potter-ish and that's cool. Okay, but what I like about the balloons is that they're thinking about the air that is that is used um, for the balloon. And, the, you know, I'll ask the kids, well, how did the balloon get like this? Oh, well, we blew air in it. Okay, so do you have to blow a lot of air or just a little bit of air? And do, is it a like that or is it a steady stream of air to fill up the balloon? And so that's... It's just one of those things to help make that connection with something that's in their lives regularly all the time. Um, so the I found a lot, whole lot of success with the um, with reading the notation, whether the notation is this or whether the, the notation is a paper clip. It's still a symbol for a sound, right? And that's all music notation is anyway. So we don't have to necessarily know the notes on the staff, but we can associate the colors. Then with a paper clip on a staff, you can just put the paper clip on the staff and, and that helps to reinforce really, really positive note reading exercises as well. Thank you, Jenny. That's very yeah. kind of you. Thank you so much. So we have, uh, this is our little what do we call it, teacher validation or brag sheet. We have people across the country that are using the PBAs. We focused on three testimonials here in Texas. And next, what I wanted to do, just allow Melissa Bloom, please, to talk for a minute about uh, the, we have a number of participants, I think about five or six from Texas that are, that is undergoing a grant right now. So you wanna say a few words, Melissa, I should have you, uh, you're not on mute anymore. Can you speak, Melissa? Yep, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So we are really excited about the opportunity that TMEA has made for the elementary teachers. And the really great part of this particular webinar is that this is during the time frame when those grants um, can now be submitted to TMEA. So Texas music educators who are members of TMEA have until November 15th to apply for up to an $800 grant for elementary music supplies for their classroom. Um, not coincidentally, we have a great deal on a classroom set of 30 P buzzes that comes in right at $800. Um, and, we are, and we are doing additional discounts obviously there as well as free shipping. Um, so we have lots of ways to make it very fast for you to do. Part of the requirement of the grant application is that you have a quote from an approved vendor, which we are and we are able to turn those around to you the, the day you call, the moment you email, all of those things. We have several of our education consultants who can turn those around and get them back to you. So as you can see, uh, you can email us at tmeaelementarygrant at westmusic.com. We have a landing page on our website, which not only can you get to it by doing westmusic.com slash tmeaelementarygrant, but there's also just a little it's little, unfortunately, but a little map of Texas uh, right on our homepage that you can click on to get to that landing page. And we have a dedicated phone number, the 877-393-6854. If all of those fail you or you don't get them written down, just call us at our regular number. And of course, we will get you to someone who can assist. Um, and you know, if you have not, is not the needs for all 30 of them, 
and you want us to combine P buzzes with a few other items, we are of course glad to do that. And we are offering additional discounts, you know, beyond what you see on the website as well as free shipping. So we will definitely help you maximize that to get the most for your students. Um, and we just, you know, truly appreciate being part of that. We've had quite a few teachers who have said, yeah, this is what I want to do with that grant because it really gets you a huge amount for that price and you'll have an immediate set ready to use for your students. Melissa, thank you so much. No problem. We are glad to be here. So I can just show you, or Stephen, if you're, you want to spend a few words in closing, maybe? Uh, well, I, I think just go back to the beginning, really. And um, for us, it's about setting some inspiration and aspiration for children in music. We're not all going to go on to be professional musicians. Um, but that's the top of the pinnacle that we, we want children to see and recognize those. And we're great. You know, we're always delighted to see professionals using our instruments in their, uh, in their lives. Um, but really it's the future professionals. And so it's this, this kind of pre band base and getting those uh, young children excited, passioned uh, about making music. That's what we're all about. So, I'm going to unmute everybody. So if you have any questions, I said you can use the chat or there's 17 or 18 of us. If you don't talk all at the same time, please go ahead and ask now. Now's your time, your opportunity. Is everybody shy this afternoon or this evening across the United States? Something else that we've done here, I'll just go ahead and speak up. Um, here in, in Lubbock, Texas, where Keith and I um, teach at Texas Tech, um, one school uh, has some pee buzzes, but they're not using them the whole year. So then I go pick them up and I take them to, it's kind of like, you know how we have to share risers all the time, or we have to share our, um, it, it, the, the equipment for this, that, or the other. So we can share these in a feeder pattern. And that's really helpful too, because you're not, I mean, some people want to use P buzz like every Friday as the, as a huge reward, right? But then maybe you're not going to want to use them every single day. Um, because I, I, would, I, I didn't use recorder every single day either, but you can take those, take that set and, and let another school use it. Um, just until you can afford or till you know that your your time comes in your district this is the way it is in Texas anyway well, there it's time for your district to get some more um, some more money but go ahead and introduce the kids and have them asking and then when they see the principal walking down the hall they can say mr. so-and-so miss so-and-so when are we gonna get our P buzzes because that's usually helpful if it comes more from the kids than from the teachers anyway <laughs> So, I have used, I have used rain, uh, the um, P buzzes last year, but my class sizes this year are so large. Uh, rhythm band instruments showed me that I could get mouthpieces. That yes. when the kids are coming in, we just swap mouthpieces for the other thirty kids that are in the room at the same time, so that they're not just sitting there doing anything. So we've got mouthpieces, and then we swap instruments. So I'm looking forward to getting that started as soon as we yeah. get my, my grant done. So. Absolutely. Well, I was in this week, so I'm excited. Yeah, and Stephen probably doesn't want me to give that idea of trading the. No. Well, P I already have school. the pee buzzes. Good. I've already bought the pee buzzes. Good. Wow. Okay. Good. Then that makes it better for me. Sorry, Stephen. Yeah. No, no, that's it's, it's no problem. Jenny, Sorry. we want more kids to play. If they start yeah. on this and have this, yeah. that'll get them going. The more kids use this, the more we'll use one of those. Absolutely. We're not yeah. biased to that. Honestly speaking, we are okay. a company that was really focused on growing the bass. And Alice, you're not doing anything wrong. Keep well, I'm a trumpet player, so I'm good with that. Oh, I, I don't know about that. That I don't know about. <laughs> okay. Any, uh, so there was earlier a question, I think Stephen, you answered it already about children or people with development opportunities. We have- Yeah, I shared, I shared a link in the chat forum. And if you go onto our site, um, in the UK, we call it special education needs with disabilities. Um, so SEND, um, and there's a great article there that has been written about people's is being used in, the, in those environments. 
Um, and there's a few other things featured as there as well. I haven't got anything US specific, uh, I don't think, unless Jenny knows of any. Well, I just know, not specific to PIBAs, but I do know Alice Hamill has a ton of information about using color coding with notation for better, greater accessibility. Also, Judith Jellison has a lot of information out about color coding and its accessibility. I, I know those two, um, those two ladies have a, a ton of information about that. Thank you. So that might help. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. All right, so we promised you you'd be done in 40 minutes if somebody said that. We're at 38 minutes right now. Woo! So if you, if you don't have any other questions, we're recording the video. You can go look back at it, or at any point in time, feel free to email us, uh, call us. We're, we're happy to help you, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for participating. Bye-bye.